Okay, so we'll start with zero. Cotangent at zero is what, Max? Zero? Agree? <laughs> Kristen said no. Was cotangent at zero? Emma? Undefined. Would you guys agree cotangent is x divided by y? Is it x1 and y0? Yeah, it's undefined, okay? So, ask them to right away. Cotangent of pi of a four, this one goes to Ruby. What is that, hon? If you're not sure, consult with your team. This is teamwork. One, perfect. Cotangent at pi over 2. Emma? Perfect. Cotangent of 3 pi over 4. Caitlin, Emma? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Cotangent back at pi. Sophia, D? Thank you. Very good. And here is our nice... Decreasing curve. And then once you have that, I'm just going to repeat the pattern. Okay? 0, 1, and negative 1. By now we know. Is this a 1 to 1? No. no. Okay, because we said no. What's the reason why we restrict things to 1 to 1? Right, so the inverse can be a function. Now look at it. Where are we going to set up? Yeah, this one's nice. Okay, one continuous curve from zero to pi. Beautiful. Now, just like always, we are going to flip over and switch x and y. X equals cotangent of y. Then we are going to compose both sides by cotangent inverse, so we can have a y equals. So we are cotangent inverse of x equals y, which we use the notation of f inverse of x, just like that. Okay. So we are now going to state the domain of our inverse. What is the domain of our inverse? All reals. Because the range of that is the regular is all real. So we so this is all reals. What's the range of our cotangent inverse? Zero to, pi. Zero to pi. Now, as you know by now, I do relate these back to the quadrants. What two quadrant quadrants is cotangent inverse in? One and not four. One and two. dose. Okay? So now we have all six of the quadrants. I mean all six. All six of the inverse functions. So let's recap. What trick inverse belongs in one and two? Sine. Sine is not in one and two. Sine is oh. one and four. Cosine. 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 Cosine, yes. Cosine inverse is one and two. What else? Secant. Secant. What else? Cotangent. Cotangent inverse. So those are one and two. What the trick inverse that is one and four. Sine inverse, what else? Cosecant inverse, because it's reciprocal, and then tangent inverse. So there are, is anything in three ever? No. no. So you go one and two, or one and four. Okay. So we are going to, yes, Zen. Oh, because the one to one, honey. Because the one to one is, if I were to cut off it right here, like what you wanted, right? The reason that's okay, if I cut off right here, it's fine, but what happened to these two dots? Yeah, so they're not going to be one to one, you know? Um, so that's why they just go this route. And plus, it's prettier from zero to pi. It's more continuous. Okay. All right, let's graph out our regular from 0 to pi. 
and then we'll switch the point to do so here's pi here's negative pi up a pi down a pi and then we have a negative so these are by quarters each tick mark is worth one quarter of a pi okay Then I also need a one take mark. Can I put a one take mark one third of the distance from zero to pi? Yeah. Yeah, so here we go. One, one, negative one, and negative one. Okay. Asymptote for the original, we will have one asymptote right at zero, just like that. And then we have another asymptote at pi. So there's that. Okay. So this is your original. Okay. The original has three dots. At pi of four, how far high up do we go? One. Very good. So I'll label this dot. Pi over four comma one. The reason if I label it, you can easily switch it later. At pi, what do we go for the original? Zero. So pi comma, I'm sorry, pi over two, Woo, pi over two, thank you, good eye, pi over two, comma, zero. And then three pi over four, we are going to go down at negative one. negative one, yeah, right there. I'm going to label that three pi over four, comma, negative one, okay? It's easier to switch the points if it's already labeled. So this is your original. Now we're going to do an inverse. Where should we put the asymptotes? Pi on the y-axis, right? Right? And then what's the other one? Yep. Perfect. One and two. So here's our inverse. Now I would also need three dots. Dot number one. Yeah, one is my red. Pi over four is the first take mark. So here's one over four. Assume that's a Okay, so that's one comma pi over four. Where's dot number two? Zero pi over two. So pi over two is on the y-axis now. Would you guys agree? Last dot. Negative one up to three pi over four. In my case, that's my third tick mark on the y-axis. And I'm gonna try to draw that out. So that is what cotangent inverse looks like, guy. Okay? Does it look like it's symmetrical about that disco line, y equals x? Yeah. yeah right? So totally. Now, we are going to come back to method number two. But right now, let's go to example two. Example two says, find the exact value. Calc or non-calc? Non-cal. Do you know how to find the answer to 2a? Yes. Try. Find the answer to 2a. If you don't, that's okay. Just talk to your friends about how to, what are the steps that you would need to take to find it. Oh, yes. Here we go. Talk it out. Communicate with your friends. If you don't remember from algebra 2 trick, totally okay. Just go and... No. We have an answer. Okay. Just a, who has an answer? What is the answer? Uh-huh. Pi over six? Now the question is how? Tim. I, I used the method that you sure. 
Okay. So okay. I said that cosecant inverse two is equal to a blank box. Thank you. Then I took the inverse of that, which was the cosecant of a blank box equals two. Okay, so hold on. I need to write. Okay, so like that. Perfect. Yeah. And then I wrote, rewrote it as one over sine blank box is equal to two. Beautiful. And then I just kind of plugged in numbers to see, like, one divided by one of the signs and that restriction is equal to two. Good job. It's one half, and then that's corresponding to like six. Yeah, perfect. Would you agree? Technically, I can go and flip this equation. I'm going to go and turn the right side upside down, and if I turn the right side, I have to also turn the left side. So would it be okay if I continue Tim's method and go, okay, is that still equivalent? Now you should know this, right? You should know sine of something, in this case, empty box equals a half, and that empty box is? Pi over six. Now try B. <laughs> I hope the cosecant, remember, goes from positive 1 to infinity for the positive side. Oh, right, right. right. Remember you asked me yesterday, how come it goes up forever? Yeah. Yes, 2 totally would totally fit. So try to, uh, B, what do you have? Okay, you guys all have the same? Now, if you know how to do these straight up, can you just go straight? Sure, okay. Um, we're going to fix this answer, right? Yeah. Oh, okay. All right, how do we get the answer to B? What would you do? If you know the answer already, what's the answer? Uh, Five with three? Yeah. Okay, if we don't, we're going to use uh, Tim's method. Give it a, a box. We are now going to compose both sides by regular secant. Would that still be okay? Secant, it's 1 over what? 1 over cosine of my box. Can I flip it? Yeah. Okay, you don't have to flip it if you already know, but some of you are better at using sine and cosine and tangent. Okay. Find the answer. That's right. Okay, this is what I'm going to test you to see if you can give me the right answer for C. By the way, who worked out C already? A couple. Okay, why don't I give you another 30 seconds to see how far you can go with C. And if you can do D, go. Actually, you know what? Don't do D yet. Just do C, just in case. <laughs> just in case. Just do C. I'm going to bribe you if you guys have the right answer. I'll give you. This is all I got. Okay. <laughs> if you got the right answer on C. Okay, ready? Who thinks they got an answer? What do you have? No. Yes. How do you know? You want it? Yeah. <laughs> hey. <laughs> yes. Because of our restrictions is right. Cotangent inverse is in one and two. Okay, which is slightly different when you borrow tangent inverse. Would you guys agree with that? Yeah. Okay, so same thing. I'm going to use method number one, which is Tim's method here. Same thing. I'm going to go, okay, I will now compose both sides by regular cotangent. If you like tangent better, convert to 1 over tangent of theta, or in this way, a blank uh, answer. Then I'm going to flip it to say tangent of some box equal to 
negative 1 over rad 3. I do not need to rationalize because I don't, that's not my final answer. Then I know, right? I know tangent inverse is in quads 1 and 4. four. Tangent inverse, okay? But think about this. My original is not a tangent inverse, okay? My original, because this is tangent inverse in quad 4, which, by the way, I saw a lot of you have what angle? Negative pi over? 6. six. But my original is a, a cotangent inverse. So that means it has to be in quad number 2, okay? The reference angle, reference angle means it's always positive. The reference, reference angle is still pi over 6, so that means that big ginormous empty box should be filled in with 5 pi over 6. Okay, now this will lead me to method number 2. Feel free to do that all the time. Okay, Here's method 2, which will help you not worry about the restrictions using tangent inverse. So method two will require tangent inverse still, but we are going to manipulate tangent inverse. So tangent inverse was from negative pi over two to pi over two. Would you guys agree? When we graphed it out? Okay, so here we go. Negative pi over two all the way to pi over two. We are about to graph tangent inverse. And then tangent inverse had an asymptote at both of these ends. Do you guys remember this? And then, so we're going to go up. Oh, actually, you went sideways. I need to go sideways, sorry. I'm graphing tangent inverse. Pi over 2, negative pi over 2, asymptotes here, asymptotes here. Okay. So the green ink is, I'm about to graph tangent inverse. Okay. So look at your tangent inverse and tell me what dots can we use. One of the dots for tangent inverse. What did you guys have? Zero, zero. Yeah, let's start with zero, zero. Perfect. Definitely zero, zero. How about one more dot? Yeah, one pi over two. Yeah, one pi over two. Uh, pi over four, you mean? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So one tick mark will be two-thirds of this distance, okay? So one pi over four is halfway, so there you go. Perfect, good job. One more dot for tangent inverse. Negative one, negative one. That's right, negative one, negative pi over four. So this is your tangent inverse. You still have it in your notes packet, okay? I'm gonna hold it tight so I don't go too fast. Now we are going to also sketch out cotangent inverse, which we just got done doing. Cotangent inverse have asymptotes from zero to what? Cotangent had one asymptote is zero, right? Which I want to make it zero to pi. Pi is right here, is that okay? Here's a pi. One asymptote right here, yes, no, maybe? And then one asymptote right here for cotangent inverse. The black is y equals, bless you, cotangent inverse. Okay, there's a the black. Then I got three dots again for cotangent inverse. Dot number one for cotangent inverse. Just look above a previous page where you were. Or just one of the dots. Negative one, three, power four. Negative one, three, power four. Perfect. Then what else? Zero comma pi over, two. pi over two. Then we have one more dot. One, one comma pi over, pi over four. So it looks like it's that dot. They both have that one dot in common. Okay, so that's your cotangent inverse. Okay, so how are we going to do this? I would like for you to take the green, which is tangent inverse, and move it or flip it or whatever you want to do, rotate it so that way it will look like the black. 
What would you do first? Okay. Yeah, let's do that. Can we do that? Can we flip it? Okay. So I'm going to write that down first. I'm going to take the tangent, which is the green, tangent inverse. Tangent inverse. And Ray said reflect it. Where would I put this negative? In front. True or false? Yes. Right. Let's stick it in there. Okay. We flipped it. So now it's upside down. What else do you have to do to make it look exactly the black? Add pi over 2. Yes. We're going to move it up. 5 pi over 2. Gorgeous. Okay. So that's exactly right. Okay. That right there, those transformations will make it look like the black graph. So, from now on, if you do not want to worry about restrictions, class, you can find cotangent inverse using that right there. I'm going to put the pi over 2 in the front, so that way you don't have to worry about the negative. You can take pi over 2, take away tangent inverse of the same value x, whatever x is. x can be radian, x can be an angle. Okay. Now, look at it. Do I need to flip my x? when I'm using this one up. No, I'm not flipping at all the x, right? You know, like on example two A and B, some of us use sine inverse of one over. For this one up, we do not flip it, okay? You're definitely going to need to know this from now until the end of the calculus day. So highlight it, box it, make it known. So if you want to use this all the time to find cotangent inverse, feel free to use it all the time or use method number one. Okay. Now that you know the second method, can you do me a favor and use that to find the answer to D for dog? How would you find the answer to D and what is the answer? So find the answer, come here with your team, and then we'll shuffle the card. Wow. Hi, uh, we should have an angle. <laughs> okay, remember, you just learned method number two. Use method number two to find what is x in this particular case? Negative one. Do it normally. Okay? Is this a little bit easier than method number one? No. No? It's okay. You do you use whatever method you want. Okay, so cotangent inverse of a negative one is exactly the same as we were to take pi over two minus tangent inverse of a negative one. Yay, name maybe? Yes. Pi over two. Take away. Tangent inverse of a negative one is in what quadrant? Four. What angle in four? Negative pi over four. So I'm going to write negative pi over four. Two negatives will make it a positive. Common denominator will tell me is two pi over four here plus a pi over four. Final answer should be? Let's verify that really quickly. Is cotangent negative in quad two? Yeah. Yeah, so that should be it. Okay, soak it in before I move on. Right. Yeah, because the one to one, the one to one is of of your cotangent, one-to-one is of your tangent. Okay, take out your calculator. Now, I want you to find the answer to mount to two decimal places of the next example. This is testing your calculator ability. Once you have an answer, make sure you just kind of talk to your friend, like, hey, I got this. Did I enter it right? Good. 
Radiance. 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 Go back to Radiance. It is 14 years old. Okay. 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 have to have an answer because it is within your restriction of cosecant. The question is how do you punch it in? I'm gonna go back to Tim's method. Can you see this right here? Okay, we flipped it, right? Now how would you, how would you punch this in your calculator? Do you go and do one over sine inverse? Or do you do sine inverse and then flip the inside? Ah, we have to take the reciprocal of the inside ratio, okay? So this one class, you have to do sine inverse of what? Okay, so now... Chris E, what's your calculator say? Okay. All right, now try B. <laughs> no, that's not what we got? Are you in the radius or radius? You need to be radius. Head mode and change to radius, John. Head mode, go to radiance for me. Okay, go back. We don't do one divided by sine and then flip. You're flipping it twice. We just do sine inverse and then flip the ratio on the inside. See how it's in red? Yeah. Guys, write down that red piece right next to cosecant inverse of negative five. So later you know what you need to enter in. Um, you take notes for yourself, okay? Uh, B, Matt? Did your calculator give you an answer? No. No? Do you need help? Yeah. Oh, me? Did you help him? Oh, it's something. No, no, no. That's not why I want to see it. I'm not going to see it. I'm Yeah. Okay, so write that down. Write what you entry in as well. All right, Matt, one more time. What'd you get? 1.23. Someone confirm that for me? Yeah. Yeah, okay. So to enter that in your calculator, it's cosine inverse one divided by three. Now on C, you can do whatever you want, okay? So what method, method one or method two? Okay. If you're using method one, it should be, don't forget to bring it back to the right quadrant. If you're using method two, guys, you do not flip the ratio of a negative rad, okay? That maintains a negative rad 11. You do not flip the inside. If you look at the formula, we do not flip the inside. If you're using formula number two. Okay, enter that in. Uh, 
Okay, enter that in. If you have an issue, you need to talk to me. What's your answer? What should a calculator give you? Name it a hotel, positive angle. They have to be positive angle. Is the calculator give you positive or negative? Pause it. If it give you negative, you gotta speak up. Who has a negative answer? Mm -hmm. I do. How do you enter it in? Apparently, it's red. That's not how you enter it. Look at the red. Look at this. <coughs> Perfect. Two decimal places. Alex, why? What did you get? Uh, 2.85. 2.85. Confirm, deny? Yeah. Yeah, perfect. Okay. Ruby, you got it now? Yeah. Okay, perfect. Last example of today. Okay. Can you help me read the directions, please, Grace, to example four? Right each trigonometry expression as an algebraic expression is Perfect. Okay, so we're not solving per se because we don't have a calculator and it wants you to do as an exact. Okay, so sine is composed now with tangent inverse of u. Okay, tangent inverse right away you have restriction in quads one or quad four, but because u is unknown, I'm going to assume that's going to be a positive. So I'm going to draw a triangle in guess what? Quad one. Yeah, whatever that is. Okay. Would you agree that whatever this answer is, whatever tangent inverse of u is, that is just an angle? Mm -hmm. Right, so that's why I use green to represent that angle. Now, now that we know the angle, can I label the sides of this triangle at all? Yeah. Yeah. Tangent is what over what? Opposite, opposite over? Adjacent. adjacent. So opposite leg will get a variable u, bless you, and then adjacent leg will get a? A one. Is it possible for us to find the radius, a.k.a. hypotenuse? Yes. Yes. Using what? That's right. Here we go. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. A is just one. One squared is one. B squared is U squared equals C squared is unknown. Okay. Now what do you want to do? Uh-huh. So C will come out to be square root of 1 plus u squared. Do I need to worry about the positive and negative in front of the radical? No. No. Question number two. Guys, is this the same as 1 plus u? No. 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 Don't do that. Okay? Not the same. And let me give you a concrete example. Square root of 4 plus 9. Question mark equals to... 2 plus 3? No way. Okay, so don't do it. So right in there, I'm just going to write in square root of 1 plus. Yep. And do I have enough information to find sine of that green angle? For sure. Okay. Okay, so final answer. Sine of tangent inverse of u is... Opposite, which is you over rad 1 plus u square. How do you rationalize this? That's right. Okay, one. My computer's thinking. It doesn't want to write what I want to write. Totally frozen on me. There you go. 1 plus u squared. 1 plus u squared. So final answer is going to be u times the quantity of 1 plus u squared all over 1 plus u squared. Okay. Last one. Cosine, it's composed with secant inverse of u. Similarly, okay, secant inverse of u can be drawn in quad 1 or quad 2, but where do you want to draw it? One. Yeah, it's just easier. Not because it's right or better or, you know. Okay. 
Whatever that is, this is a theta. Okay, so that's theta. Would you guys agree? Mm -hmm. All right, can I label this triangle? Yes. Yeah. Secant is what over what? What is it? Hypotenuse. Hypotenuse, okay, which is u over adjacent, which is 1. So that means a squared plus b squared again? a squared plus b squared equals c squared. a squared is 1. 1 squared is 1 plus b squared is unknown. What's c squared? u squared. Let's move the 1 over. So b squared equals u squared minus 1. Square root both. So, b equals square root of u squared minus 1. Is that equal to u minus 1? No. No. Please don't do that. Okay. So, that is your opposite leg. Okay. okay. What's the final answer? 1 over u. u. So, technically, do you even have to find the opposite leg? No. Okay. So... Just to show, one over you, and we are done for 7-2.